Hello, dear. It's Heather, and you are watching Save Today with Heather J. I am somebody who has spent her entire adult life living paycheck to paycheck and being one life event away from financial crisis, and that is going to have to change. And in that vein, I have chosen to create this channel so that I can share my journey with others um, in the hope that that keeps me motivated and keeps me moving forward when things get difficult. Um, <clears throat> so today we are doing my June 2023 paycheck number one setup. I get paid bi-weekly and uh, my rent is due on the first of the month. So I have to start my month whenever that paycheck is. For June, the paycheck that is encompasses June 1st actually starts May 19th and ends on June 1st. My next paycheck starts June 2nd, but because that rent is due on the 1st, May 19th is when my first paycheck is for June. In an attempt to make this video a little bit faster, I have already filled everything out so we don't have to waste time watching me write things down. I tend to talk a lot and the, as much as we can shorten this, the better that's going to be. So we'll get started today. Paycheck number one set up for June. My income, I again, I get paid bi-weekly and I'm a hourly employee, not salaried. So I get paid $20 an hour. I estimate 30 hours, 38 hours a week, and it's for two weeks. I take 25% out for my taxes and insurance, and I am left with um, an estimate of $1,140. I do have a line item for other income, but I don't routinely have other income. I do not have a second job. I do not receive child support. I do not have any sort of investments that I would receive monthly or quarterly payouts for. So that line item is always zero, but it is there in case something were to come up unexpectedly, then there's a sp spot to put that. So my estimated income for the month of June is $1,140. So then we have to look at what my fixed expenses are, my bills, the things I have to pay, whether I like it or not, somebody sets the fee, and I'm required to pay it. And if I don't pay it, there are penalties. <clears throat> the first one here is my rent. My rent is $850. And there's a $3 service fee for having it set up as auto withdrawal. <clears throat> so $853 for rent. I do have one credit card payment for $100 that comes out of this check. And I do have a bill for U-Haul that takes $197.98. For those of you who have this is your first time, I do move quite frequently. My most recent move, um, I moved from out of state and I chose to leave my everything I own in U-Haul boxes, basically pods, and to have those shipped to me. Um, it turns out having them shipped to me cost a little bit more than I had uh, initially been estimate. Uh, the estimate was, so those are still in the other state in storage. I have three boxes at 97, 98, and two of them are due during this pay period. <clears throat> that leaves my total fixed expenses for this pay period at $1,150.98. Um, you may see that there's already some uh, challenges in this budget. Then we get into my flexible spending, which is the things I have a little bit more control over. I can wait to get my groceries. I can take the bus instead of the car um, to save on gas, and I don't have to go out to eat. My flexible spending categories I've chosen are groceries, dining out, um, transportation, art, and miscellaneous. So let's get into that. Last month being my first month, I had underestimated what all of my categories were. This month, I have increased everything a little bit. So for my groceries, I've estimated for this pay period $220. That's $110 a week, which is $20 more a week than I gave myself in May. In dining out, I've estimated $50, which is $25 a week. For the two-week pay period, that's $10 more a week than I had given myself last month. 
transportation. I have uh, estimated this month that I will be getting uh, trans paying for gas every 10 days, um, which in the six weeks period is for, uh, for Phillips for me. So on this pay period, there's one, uh, gas is roughly 370 and I do tend to take the bus. So I have transportation at $40. I have art. I discussed my art a little bit more in my monthly paycheck number one, but art, um, is something that's very important and is, a uh, is, is not, something that gets to be cut out of my budget. It is something that has to be honored as such. And then I do have miscellaneous. Uh, both of those get $20 a week, $40 a paycheck. So for flexible spending, I have estimated $350. Um, obviously, I don't have that this pay period. We'll have to see how my monthly or my weekly spending check-ins go. Let's look at my ending balance. I have an income expected, estimated at 1,140. I have fixed expenses at $1,150.98. And I have flexible spending of $350 estimate, which leaves me total uh, estimated to be under, to have paid more than I have by $360.98. How am I gonna make that work? Well, I do tend to, underestimate my income and overestimate my taxes and insurance so i expect this will be a little bit higher once i get that entered in there um, also i did save 110 dollars from my last paycheck to cover because i knew i needed that to float my rent and my credit card um, and i will be very careful and doing as absolute minimum here in my flexible spending um, so this won't be the full 350, but I do have to spend some here. So as we get into my actual, at the end of this pay period, we'll see how that ends up coming out. Um, so that is my paycheck number one set up for June of 2023. Things look a little challenging here. It is because of the week that my rent is due that I would really like to get a new credit card once I'm done paying off this credit card. Again, um, I did talk about the fact that I need to get another secured card. I need to have a way to get my flexible spending on a pay period when things are tight like this and then be able to pay it off in the next pay period where things are a little more flush so that I don't have this feast and famine situation happening um, while I struggle through this. It is that feast and famine situation that has forced a lot of my paycheck to paycheck and my constantly being behind and my shuffling, robbing Peter to pay Paul. I have to eat and I have to get to work. And sometimes that has meant having to put off a bill till later. And I need to have a way where I can cover that. So that is my paycheck number one set up for June of 2023. I thank you for um, being here for that. For those of you, that's all you're here for. Um, thanks for popping in. I am going to discuss my crafts at the end of my budget. This I have brought in as a way to keep myself motivated, keep myself pushing forward, and um, to bring some of my own personality into the page. This project I have, this uh, laying back behind you, this is a project my eldest granddaughter asked me uh, several years ago. She and I went shopping. She picked this heart-shaped pillow form and she wanted me to make her a heart pillow to signify how much I love my granddaughter. And she picked this fabric here that is uh, loosely based on the um, movie Frozen. Um, I, if I remember correctly, they had the Elsa and Anna in the display at the grocery store. So she picked this and, um, this is the backside of a second fabric. So she's got two, two fabrics. This is my attempt at the pillow form. And of course this is right sides together. So this, what you're seeing here is the muted sides of that. I have attempted to sew this a couple of times and it's not worked out well. So I've had to take it apart. And now I've basted it all together. So this month we will get this done. I will get this done here with you. But I wanted to let you know what we're working on this month. This is this heart-shaped pillow. We did get a zipper. 
to be able to get that pillow form in and out of there so that she can take that off and wash that. So we picked that. And then we picked some pom-pom trim that will get sewn on um, on the, the top edge here so that when we uh, turn everything right side out, this will be on the outside edge of this little pom-pom frill uh, to give it some fun little personality there. And then obviously we have way too much fabric. We did pick enough that we could sew the two pieces of fabric together and give her a fleece blanket, a two-sided fleece blanket. And we've got some satin binding that will go around the edges and hold those pieces together for her. So that is what we're working on for June. Um, if we get both of these projects done ahead of time or before my six weeks is up, because June is a, is a three paycheck month, then we will pull something else out. Um, I think this will be fairly easy, but this is my third attempt at trying to get this pillow sewn correctly. So it has not been as easy so far as I had thought it was going to be. Um, in my May budget, I really rushed through discussing my craft at the end. And I, it's too important to me to rush through that. So for those of you who aren't interested, I'm, I apologize that that's not your cup of tea, but I am going to continue having this in my video and I'm going to give it a longer focus and not rush through it um, at the end of my videos. Um, so that is where we're at today. I do thank you again for choosing to join me. Thanks for being here on my um, credit, on my budget journey. Thanks for your comments in May's and uh, thanks for the comments coming that I know will come in June. I really do look forward to the interaction. It does help me stay on track. Um, for those of you who are interested in the craft, I thank you for sticking around for that. And I encourage any questions in regard to either the budget or the crafting. Again, um, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, thank you so much for choosing to be here and uh, have fun today. Bye-bye now.